Carl, an heir to a giant fortune, was found unconscious during a wild party. His sister, Sarah, stumbled across him in the bathroom. The guy was lying on the floor, barely alive. Sarah immediately called the ambulance and police. Carl was taken to a hospital. Doctors saved his life, but the guy was still unconscious. He couldn't talk. When the police questioned Sarah, she told them that her brother had felt unwell. He went to the bathroom to freshen up. After some time, she heard some noise and went to check on him. Carl must have slipped and hit his head on the sink. After the police officers heard this story, the sister got arrested right away. Why? For one thing, it happened during a loud party. How could the girl hear any suspicious noise? Carl was also lying too far away from the sink, which was on the other side of the bathroom. Boy, with a sister like that. Look at this picture and try to figure out who is from the future. Well, I'm pretty sure there were no flashlights in the Stone Age. All the people working in the office, Janice, Brian, Teresa, Sean, and Roy, used the fridge in the kitchen to store their lunch. On Friday, Janice opened the fridge to get her bacon and cheese sandwich she brought from home. But it wasn't there. Someone had eaten her lunch. Who was it? Well, it couldn't be Brian. There's a wet umbrella near his desk. He has just come in. Teresa is a vegan. She eats neither cheese nor bacon. Roy is on a diet, and such a sandwich is by no means light food. This means Sean was the one who stole Janice's sandwich. You bad boy. When Joe came to work, he saw his safe was open. All the money and important documents were gone. He immediately called his friend, Detective Callum. When the man arrived, Joe told him, I think it was one of my employees. They must have borrowed my key and opened the safe. Callum questioned the three people who worked for Joe. Wayne said, I don't even know what the safe looks like. And of course, I don't know which key opens it. Austin said, I'm Joe's assistant. I do have the second key to the safe, but I was on holiday and just returned. And Julia just said, I can't prove it, but I didn't do it. Who's lying? Wayne. No one told him the safe could be opened with a key, not a combination lock. Then how did he know? Someone stole several expensive t-shirts in a designer clothing store. The manager told the security guard he had half an hour to find the thief. If you don't make it in time, you'll be fired! The guard rushed to watch the CCTV footage. Luckily, he managed to figure out who the thief was before his time ran out. And do you know who it was? It's the man in the dark blue sweater. His belly miraculously became larger after he spent some time in the store. He must be hiding the t-shirts under his sweater. Look at this picture and try to understand what's wrong here. The reflection in the mirror is all wrong. Terry was sailing around the world when his yacht got caught in a terrible storm. At one moment, the guy hit his head against the mast and lost consciousness. When he came around, he was on a beach. Unfriendly-looking locals had gathered around. Soon, Terry figured out they really didn't like strangers. They offered the guy three options. To send him to a cave filled with tarantulas throw him into a pit swarming with yellow scorpions, or make him meet hungry lions. What should Terry choose to survive? He should opt for tarantulas. These creatures look terrifying, but they are mostly harmless to humans. Mostly. 
Captain Jack was a feared pirate who had robbed thousands of ships. He did it with the help of just one small trick. It allowed him to approach any ship from any country close enough to board it. What was this trick? Captain Jack had a collection of flags from different countries. Instead of using Jolly Roger, the fearsome black flag, he raised the flag of the country the ship was from. It got him immediate access. Now you're tied up on some railroad tracks and can't wriggle free. There's a train heading your way, and it doesn't look like it's stopping. Oh well, if you stretch your arms out, you can just reach a lighter, a small pocket razor, and a can of oil. Which can you use to escape? Pour the oil on the ropes holding you down. It'll act as a lubricant, and you'll be able to wriggle free. Taylor finished another awesome ice fishing session. He packed up his gear and walked back home with his dinner. Halfway back to the car, he realized he was being followed by a hungry cougar. It started chasing him. Taylor was so close to his car, but the cougar was gaining on him. What should he do? He should fling the fish to the side to distract the cougar. Then he should ditch all his gear. It's just slowing him down. That way, he's got a chance of making it to the car before he turns into cougar chow. Well, you find yourself in a pitch black room. The room is huge and there are many hallways and corridors leading to unknown places. You need to find your way out before the room starts heating up like an oven. You only have two minutes. You can feel some pipes on the wall but nothing else. How can you save yourself? When the pipes start heating up, they'll probably turn red. It'll already be super hot by then, but you'll have just enough time to figure out the layout of the room and find a way to escape. Angela decided to go for a nice walk in the forest. Mm -hmm. About an hour in, she tripped and spilled all her water. No problem! Right in front of her was a tiny lake, and close by, a small stream and a cactus. Which one should you use to get herself a refreshing drink of water? She should head for the stream. That lake isn't moving. That means it probably has bacteria living in it. And a single cactus won't have enough water to quench your thirst. Even though the stream is pretty small, moving water is almost always the safest option. What are those things? Ah, oh, paw prints! Those are bear tracks heading to the forest, a wolf print coming out of the forest, and some elk prints heading toward a lake. Well, what's the best place to go if you're not into the whole being eaten thing? Think fast! The bear going into the forest probably scared that large dog off. Oh, you thought those were wolf prints? Mm, Not likely. Wolves mostly travel in packs. The bear is most likely chasing the elk, so they'll both end up at the lake. That means the forest's safe for now. You're stuck in a well in a small village, and the water's already up to your knees. There's a rope leading to the mouth of the well, but it's definitely not strong enough to hold you. You look around and find a bucket, some clothing, and a lighter. How do you escape? Shove the clothes in the bucket, tie the bucket to the rope, and light the clothes on fire. Then quickly hoist the bucket up. Chances are, in such a small village, someone will see the smoke and run over to help you. Kate finished her morning hike and decided it was time to go home. She saw a vintage jeep parked by the hiking path. While she was admiring it, a huge grizzly appeared in front of her. The bear didn't seem that interested in her, for now, but that could change any second. There was a large screwdriver on the floor by the jeep. What can she do to make sure the bear won't be interested in her? She can puncture the gas tank with the screwdriver and douse herself in gasoline. That way, the bear wouldn't be so interested in her scent. Eric was out camping and he needed some light to see in the dark. He reached into his tent, but his flashlight wasn't working for some reason and his phone only had 10% battery. He looked around and saw a bottle of water, an empty sandwich bag, his hiking boots, and a pillow. 
What can he do to make more light? He can take his phone and put it right next to the water bottle. The water inside the bottle will diffuse the light, making it much brighter. Adrian and Jack went rock climbing all day, then realized it was time to head home. After a long walk through the woods trying to get to their car, they realized they were totally lost. They'd never been in these woods before. They didn't have a clue what to do. What's worse, Jack collapsed from exhaustion and couldn't take another step. Adrian tried to lift him up, but Jack was too heavy. Night was approaching. He tried to call for help, but neither phone had any signal. His only choice was to venture out and seek help. He checked both gear bags and found a small pick hammer, some ropes, some sturdy locks, and a harness. What should he do? Adrian should put on the harness and tie all the ropes together to make one huge long one. Then he should tie one end to Jack and one end to his harness. That way, if he got lost in the woods, he'd be able to find his way back to Jack. That's one long rope. Somebody was stealing important documents from the office. The guards didn't see anyone, neither did the secretary. The boss decides to install the security cameras to find out who was doing it. They checked the footage carefully and found out who it was. Can you guess? It's the man in the white shirt. When he went out of the office, he had two folders in his hand. At the beginning of the day, he had only one. Jamie wanted to know if his wife cheated on him. Mm. He wasn't sure if she actually went on that business trip in Australia. He asked her to send a selfie, mm. which she did. When mm. he saw the photo, he knew exactly that his wife was lying to him. How did he guess? Well, it's January in Canada, and the streets are full of snow. How come there's snow in Australia? It's supposed to be summer there. Everybody knows that an old witch lives in this spooky old house. Nobody really wants to meet her. Mary is in this house right now, but she seems to be alone. How come? Who said witches can't have the name Mary? Back in the day, she was young and beautiful too. Jack has a small shop that sells socks. One day, he decided to attract more people and launched an advertisement. Socks for free. Many people came there, but all the customers had to pay, even though the socks were free. Why? Jack would only give the left sock to his customers. They looked nice, and people wanted to buy it. Who needs only one sock after all? A man was driving his car all the way from New York to LA. At the end of the trip, he discovered that one of his car's tires had been punctured from the very beginning. Still, he reached his destination successfully. How is it possible? The punctured tire was a spare one. You're trapped in a room that's slowly getting filled with water, coming from a faucet in the wall. There's no windows in the room, and the door is sealed shut. You have a mop and a big bucket. So how are you going to get yourself out of this one? Come on, just turn the faucet off. Now it's better. There are five girls in the room. Nicole is talking on the phone, Kimberly is reading, Jessica is playing hide-and-seek, and Melody is tidying up. What's Sarah doing? Sarah is playing hide-and-seek with Jessica. Five, six, seven. Five, six. Which number is missing? A small hint. It's not seven. You have seven seconds to do the math. Number 8 is missing. The subsequent number of 567 is 568. Sally works as a barista. This morning, she dropped a cup full of coffee. Luckily, her white shirt wasn't stained, but it took a while to clean up the mess. How come?
There were coffee beans in the cup. They ended up right under the counter. Imagine you've just entered a pitch black room. There's an oil lamp, a newspaper, and some kindling wood inside the room. You only have one match. You have to make a tough choice. What to light first? The oil lamp is definitely a good choice, but it's still incorrect. First of all, you'll need to light the match. After the bank had been robbed, the police found the money in the park among cacti. After the police officers arrested all the suspects, they almost immediately figured out who the bank robber was. Can you do the same? This guy on the left has scratches left by cacti all over his body. There are six glasses in a row on the table. The first three are filled with orange juice and the other three are empty. Your task is to make full and empty glasses alternate by moving just one glass. How can you do it? Take the second glass and pour the juice in the fifth glass. Dennis was at home watching TV. All of a sudden, his wife's super expensive vase fell and broke in their bedroom. He ran into the room in time to see a stranger jump out the window and run away. Dennis tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold. That's why he couldn't identify who it was. When the police arrived, they listened to his story and immediately knew he was lying. The man made the story up to not tell his wife he'd broken the vase. How did they know this? Anyone who wears glasses know they don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. Jacob's girlfriend Nicole loved riddles. One day she was on a business trip to France. She called Jacob and told him it was her relative's birthday. Could you go and congratulate them, please? When the guy asked her which relative he had to visit, Nicole answered, It's the daughter of the only son of my grandfather. Who is this mysterious relative Jacob is asked to congratulate? It's Nicole's sister. Brandon was a police officer. That day, he was patrolling the streets of the small town where he lived. When the man was driving past his best friend's house, he saw that the front door was open. He decided to check if everything was okay. As soon as Brandon entered the hall, he spotted his friend lying on the floor. After the man was taken to a hospital, the officer went to question the neighbors. Julie said, I've been planting new fruit trees in my garden since early morning. Nathan said, I have some problems with my car. I was in the garage all day long trying to fix them. And Patrick told Brandon, They aired a new episode of my favorite TV show. I stayed at home to watch it. Which neighbor is lying? Nathan. His hands and gloves are spotless. It wouldn't be possible if he had been repairing his car. This means he's lying. Ms. Lopez took her students to an art museum. Half an hour into the excursion, a worried museum worker approached the professor. He told Ms. Lopez one of the exhibits, a precious vase, had been damaged. The culprit could be no one else but one of the students. Only three of them came close to the vase, but who ruined it? Maria said, After I looked at the vase, I noticed my makeup was smudged, so I went straight to the bathroom. Antony said, I didn't touch the exhibit. After looking at it, I went to the next room to see the dino skeleton. And Nathan said he had been following Ms. Lopez taking notes. One of these students is lying, but who? Antony. There are no dinosaur bones in the art museum. Someone broke into Samantha's house through the window and stole some valuable things. When the police came, she told them she suspected her younger brother Sam. The police officers went to question the guy, but he denied everything. 
I was playing basketball several days ago and broke my arm. It's in a cast now. I wouldn't be able to get into the house. The police officers left. But the next day, one of them saw Sam in a cafe. The guy was still wearing the cast, but the officer immediately arrested him. Why? When the police visited Sam, the guy had the cast on his right arm. Now, it was on his left arm. Look at these two families having dinner. One is munching on pizzas with different yummy toppings. The other is having steaks and vegetables. Can you figure out which family is poorer? No matter how tasty the pizzas are, they're still cheaper than large pieces of meat. This means the family eating steaks must have more money than the second one. Keith had a tragic accident when he was a teenager. Unfortunately, it left the guy blind. He was dreaming of being able to see again for years. One day, Keith was lucky to find a doctor who told him a special surgery could solve his problem. Keith agreed right away. The surgery went well, and the guy took a train to go home. His girlfriend accompanied him. The doctor told Keith he had to wait for at least three hours before taking the bandages off. Keith was so impatient and excited, he could hardly wait for the time to be over. Three hours later, they were still on the train. And even though his girlfriend was against this idea, the guy wouldn't listen. He slowly pulled off the bandages, and then he screamed and lost consciousness. Why? When Keith opened his eyes, The train was going through a dark tunnel. The poor guy thought he was still blind and fainted. To pass an exam, Dennis has to solve a riddle. 2 plus 2 is the same as 2 times 2. Find a set of three whole numbers whose sum will be the same as their total when multiplied. Dennis gave the right answer almost immediately. These numbers are 1, 2, and 3. Tyler was going to his friend's place in the evening when a stranger in a black mask caught him. The next thing the guy knew, he was in a large room, locked in a cage. There were three levers in the wall next to the cage. If he pulled the first lever, he would let hungry lions into the cage. The second lever would fill the cage with water. And the third lever would activate a special mechanism. It would make the top of the cage move down towards the bottom, crushing everyone and everything inside. Which lever should Tyler pull to survive? His only choice is the second lever. All the water will flow out through the bars of the cage. Mason is a lifeguard. One day, a girl came up to him asking for help. She said someone had stolen her wallet, which she noticed when she was going to go and grab a soda pop. Mason checked the towel where the girl left her stuff, but the only thing he noticed were her own footprints. Is this girl lying to Mason? The girl was telling the truth. Mason had an eagle eye, and he saw a guy with a fishing rod. He must have stolen the girl's wallet. No one wants to go fish in the public beach. Robbers stole a few precious gems the other day. The police were alerted immediately, but they didn't know where to look for the thieves. Suddenly, they got an anonymous email. Check all the bottles in the cars leaving the town. Best regards, Mr. X. At the end of the day, the officers stopped a car loaded with boxes and bottled water. The bottle bottoms were all covered with paint, so they thought the gems should be in one of them. The level of water was the same in all the bottles. But when one of the officers placed one of them right next to the box, he instantly realized something was off. What was it? The bottle standing next to the box is much lower than those still inside. The police then found there was a double bottom and the gems were hidden right underneath it. Two friends, Martin and Clyde, had a bet. 
Martin said he would throw a ball and it would come back to him. He also said there would be no obstacle or wall the ball could ricochet from. Clyde said it was impossible, and he lost. How's that? Martin threw the ball straight up. It obviously came back to him. No magic, just physics. Emily grabbed a really nice muffin at the cafeteria and put it on the office desk. She wanted to save it for later, but when she came back from the meeting, she saw someone had eaten her muffin. There were only three people who could do that, and only one person is telling the truth. Grace said it was Alicia. Alicia said she didn't eat anything. Tina says she didn't eat anything either. Who ate the muffin? It was Tina. Only one person is telling the truth, and it's Alicia. If Grace or Tina told the truth, then there would be two truthful people, but Emily knew only one person wasn't lying. Patrick really wanted to come to a private party, but the security would ask each person if they knew the secret access code. Patrick decided to overhear their conversations. When the person came up to the entrance, the security said 6, and the guest said 3. Then the security said 10 to the second visitor, and the reply was 3 as well. The third visitor also said three, but the security said two. Patrick thought he was ready to join the best party in town. When he came up to the entrance, the guard said seven, and Patrick replied three. The security didn't let him in. What should Patrick have said to get into that fancy party? He should have said five. The guest needed to count letters, six, 10 and 2 have 3 letters. That's why the answer was 3. In the word 7, there are 5 letters. Ben loved diamonds. For some time, he would spend $5,000 a day on precious stones. At some point, he realized he had too many gems, so he started selling them at $3,000 a piece. Sometime later, he became a millionaire. How is that possible if he was obviously losing money? Before his gem rush, Ben used to be a billionaire. Since he started losing money, he became only a millionaire. A vampire moved to a big city where nobody knew him to start a brand new life. Still, he just couldn't help it and started biting locals every single night. People got scared and invited a private investigator to solve the problem. A couple of days later, Detective Reitman had three suspects. He decided to visit each of them to find out who the vampire was. After visiting all the houses, he was sure he found the vampire. Who was it? Well, the man on the left has loads of garlic in the kitchen, and vampires are scared of it. The second suspect had a lot of silver-plated accessories, earrings, piercings, and a chain. Vampires don't really like silver. The guy in the blue shirt is a vampire. Long ago, in the kingdom of riddles, a criminal was caught. The guards took him to the king, who was famous for loving riddles. King Archibald said that if Harry, the criminal, managed to solve his riddle, he would set him free. Harry agreed and Archibald drew a two-foot line on the ground with his foot. The king asked Harry to make this line two times shorter without touching it. In the end, Harry was free. What did he do? Harry drew a four-foot line with his foot, so that the one the king drew got two times shorter. The owner of an ice cream parlor filed a theft report Someone stole all the money from the register. He was only gone for like two minutes. Detective Callum showed up 20 minutes later. There were three people inside. Ainsley said she had been talking on the phone with her friend. She hadn't seen anything. Rhett said he just arrived a couple of minutes ago. Joshua said he wasn't really paying attention. He didn't notice anything. So, can you figure out who's lying? Who stole the money? Rhett said he had just arrived, but his ice creams already melted. Liar. Phoenix wanted to get her dad the best birthday present ever, but she didn't know what he wanted. 
she decided to break into his laptop to see what he had saved in his online shopping cart. One problem, the laptop required a password, and Phoenix didn't know it. Luckily, there was a note next to it. She sent a picture of it to her friend, Detective Callum. He solved it right away. Can you? The note doesn't make sense because it's upside down. Flip it over, and you'll see a sequence of numbers 88, 89, 90, 91. The numbers before it are 86 and 87. So the password is 8687. Detective Callum traveled to a small neighboring city where young women were being kidnapped every day. Four had already gone missing, they all lived on the same street. Their names were Ava, Bella, Celeste, and Daphne. There were only three women left on the street, Ava, Riley, and Georgia. Callum had to act fast. Who would be the next target? The women are getting kidnapped in alphabetical order, A, B, C, D. The next target will be Ava. Mr. Coleman's mansion was robbed while he was on vacation. He immediately called Detective Callum. Everyone who had been to the house got interrogated. Sydney, his sister, said she'd gone to the house a couple of times to find some papers on Mr. Coleman's desk. Samantha, the gardener, said she'd come every week to water the plants. Asher, the cleaner, said he'd come every Friday to clean the house. Callum found all three of their fingerprints on Mr. Coleman's desk. He now knew exactly who the robber was. Who? It was Samantha, the gardener. Sydney and Asher had a reason to touch the desk. But Samantha wasn't even supposed to be in Mr. Coleman's office. There aren't any plants in there. A rich woman was robbed on her private yacht during a ferocious storm. A witness said they saw Kai watching the woman right before she was robbed. Kai denied everything and said he was in his cabin at the time, writing a letter to his wife. Detective Callum asked to see the letter. Five seconds after Kai handed it to him, Detective Callum put him in handcuffs. Why? Kai said he wrote the letter during the storm. There's no way his writing could be this neat when the entire yacht was swaying around like crazy. Logan, a young businessman, was poisoned in his house. Detective Callum was on the scene. Pretty soon, he had three suspects. Logan's girlfriend, Michaela. She said she hadn't seen him that day because she was busy at work. Next, there was his business partner, Rob. Rob said they'd had an argument, and they both got pretty angry, but he hadn't poisoned Logan. The last suspect was Blair, the driver. She said she wouldn't know how to poison someone even if she wanted to. Who should Detective Callum arrest? Look, there's fresh lipstick on Logan's shirt. It matches Michaela's. But she said she hadn't seen him that day. Suspicious. Eloise found her friend Fleur poisoned in her room. She called Callum and told him she was walking past Fleur's house and noticed her light was on. She texted her, but Fleur didn't respond. She got really worried, so she broke a window, climbed in, and found her on the floor. But Detective Callum didn't believe her. He immediately arrested her for poisoning her friend. Why? Eloise said she broke a window to get in. If that was true, the broken glass should be inside the room, but it wasn't. Eloise had to cover her tracks, so she broke the glass later from the inside. A college student was robbed during a flag presentation. Detective Callum arrived to investigate the case and interrogated several suspects. Kennedy said that she was in the bathroom at the time. Gavin said he'd noticed that the Japanese flag was hanging upside down, so he'd gone over to fix it. 
Eleanor said that the student who was robbed was her best friend. She would never do that. Who's guilty? It's Gavin. He said that the Japanese flag was hanging upside down. But that flag looks the same either way. He's lying. You don't have them when you're born, but you get them later. In several years, you don't have them anymore. But then they come again, but in a different form. Many years later, they might leave you again. What are they? They are your teeth. A criminal appeared in a small town, and two young women went missing. Right now, the third girl is being taken away. When she comes to her senses, she finds herself in a well with two other girls. The well isn't particularly deep, so they decide to try to get out of it. The shortest and slimmest of them climbs on top of the other two, but she can't reach the edge of the well. What can the girls do to get out of there? The tallest of the girls should climb on top. She has the longer arms and will easily reach the edge of the well. You get lost in the woods in the middle of the winter. Suddenly, you see a cabin. It's dark and cold inside. There is just one candle on the table and a wood-burning stove in the corner. You pull out your matchbox and see there's only one match left. What should you light first? The match, of course. It was winter when an elderly couple finished building a pretty new house. The husband was responsible for the construction, while his wife was a self-appointed decorator. The house looked beautiful. Very proud, they invited their teenage grandchildren to have a look at their work. But within an hour, one guy and two girls managed to break several windows. They also knocked down the fence, removed the decorations, and ruined the roof. But the most bizarre thing, the retired couple didn't seem to mind. They just smiled looking at the teenagers. Can you figure out what was going on? The grandparents made a gingerbread house and invited their grandchildren to eat it. Five costs $25 and 25, $50. If you buy 255, you'll pay $75. What is it that you buy and how much does one item cost? You're buying door numbers, and one of them costs $25. On a rainy Monday morning, a car hit a woman at the crosswalk and sped away without stopping. Luckily, the woman wasn't badly hurt. She even managed to describe the vehicle before being taken to a hospital. It was a green van. The accident happened in a small town. That's why the police figured out easily that there were just three cars like that. They found and questioned all the car owners. Gary said, My sister took part in a concert in another town. I gave her a lift and waited for the show to finish to drive her back. Angela explained to the police she'd been busy with some household chores, gardening, washing her van, and the like. Larry answered he was ill. That's why he spent the whole day in bed drinking hot tea. The police officers understood who was lying right away. Who was it? It was a rainy day. Washing a car and gardening when it's raining? Not the best idea. Angela must be lying. A man was in an eight-story building when a fire started. He jumped out the window but didn't even bruise himself. How is it possible? The man jumped out of the first floor window. Two people are standing near the river. Both of them want to get to the opposite side, but the boat can carry only one of them. It's summer, and the river isn't frozen. And still, they manage to get to the other bank. How? They are on opposite sides of the river. One town had a weird law. All the men leaving there had to be clean-shaven, but no man was allowed to shave himself. 
the only person in the town who was licensed to shave them was a 40-year-old barber. But then, who shaved the barber? There was no need. The barber was a woman. A mother promised her son to pay him $60 per hour if he washed his hands for six seconds before eating a meal. The son did that, and his mom gave him his well-earned money. But the boy got upset. Why? Because he received just 10 cents. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.